Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, which I'm sure you know is the chili capital of the world. First, before anything else, I have some very good news. Some of the 2023 growing season chili peppers in the hatch fields are being picked as I speak. Therefore, the roasting drums that have been silent since last fall, the roasting the chili drums, they're being fired up. Get ready for that wonderful sound and smell, that of roasting hatch green chili. It takes a lot of skill and expertise to pick the green chili at just the right stage of growth and an equal amount of skill and expertise to roast it. In the fire roasting process, it takes a very hot flame. The outside waxy layer of the chili pepper is quickly scorched to a char in just a couple minutes, allowing removal of that skin without damaging the inside chili meat. Fire roasting gives the chili a wonderful smoky flavor. <laughs> That's for sure. Quote today, never ask a barber if you need a haircut and never ask your dog to guard your lunch. Yeah, that's the quote. Now, every day is someone's birthday and I want to congratulate Jack Smith, who was born in space. Yes, I said it. He was born in space. There are many people in southern New Mexico besides former astronaut and U.S. Senator Harrison Jack Smith who were born in space. And we'll get back to Jack in just a moment. But he and others were born in Santa Rita, New Mexico, about 15 miles east of Silver City. Where they were born was a hospital that the Kennecott Copper Corporation, owner of the open pit mine in the town of Santa Rita, realized had lots and lots of copper underneath it. Can you see it coming? So the hospital and the town where people lived was erased by mining operations that if you drive by right now means that you can point up in the sky above the mining pit where there was all the digging there. You can point up and say, hey, right there, I was born in space. Now, partly personal, my mother and family graduate. My mother graduated from Silver City High School in 1942. My grandfather, Eugene McKim, drove the steam locomotives for those open pit mines, the Bingham and Garfield Camelback 080 locomotives. They used superheated steam to haul the copper ore, and they, he, I have a good picture of him driving one of those. So when someone says, I'm a New Mexican and I was born in space, you can now understand. Now back to astronaut Jack Smith. He was born July 3rd, 1935 in Santa Rita, in space, so to speak. He was the only non-military astronaut to go to the moon and was a geologist, which came in very handy on the moon, Apollo 17, when he recognized a, ra a rock sample that has been said now to be the most interesting sample returned from the moon by all of the Apollo missions. It is evidence, apparently, that our moon once had an active magnetic field, which to scientists is quite interesting. He walked on the moon in December 1972. And you know what I think is interesting? He can, on a clear night, look up at the moon, full moon hopefully, and mentally point to the spot where he landed. I think that's wonderful. After NASA, he ran for the U.S. Senate. He beat Joseph Montoya, who had served 12 years. However, Jack was beaten in the next election, six years later, by Jeff Bingaman, who was born in El Paso but was raised in Silver City, New Mexico. So it was two men from Silver City in a battle for the U.S. Senate seat. So if you see him, wish Jack Smith a happy birthday and ask him about being born in space. I'm sure he will tell you. This is Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Hit subscribe to automatically get these. Thanks for tuning in. We have more. Fishing is good in New Mexico, certainly at Elephant Butte Lake. I was speaking to someone who fishes there often. He said the extra heat, and yes, we do have extra heat. 
It is, makes being on the water even more pleasant when you're out on the lake. Know this, there is an entry fee to get to those areas, and uh, a fishing license is not required if you're 11 years old or younger. You can get your fishing licenses online at New Mexico Game and Fish. Now, the good news is if you're 70 years of age or older, you get your fishing license for free. Now, here's a quote about ranching from a very surprising person. She said, let me quote her, she said, well, it's a little odd the path I took because when I was young, I wanted to be a cattle rancher. That was what I knew and what I liked. Who am I talking about? Sandra Day O'Connell, President Ronald Reagan, who at the time had a ranch near Santa Barbara, nominated her to the U.S. Supreme Court. She was the first woman on the court who at one time was thinking about being a cattle rancher. There is more since we like agriculture. Sandra Day was born in El Paso, daughter of a rancher, and she grew up in a very large cattle ranch near Duncan, Arizona. It was nine miles to the nearest paved road, so you drove a lot on dirt roads. The family did not have running water or electricity until she was seven years old. She at times lived with her grandmother in El Paso and attended, she attended a school for girls in eighth grade, though, she was back at the ranch and she rode a bus each day 32 miles to school and 32 miles back on dirt roads. That's 64 total miles each day in a bus, made for a long day. She graduated from Austin High School in El Paso in 1946 and went to Stanford University, where she graduated magna cum laude with a bachelor's in economics. She got a law degree from Stanford two years later. Should have been a rancher, I guess, is the song she could sing, though I think she did very well on the Supreme Court. Michael Swickert here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. I was talking to someone about the New Mexico to Hollywood film connections when I mentioned the first New Mexico governor to really work at Let's Make Films in New Mexico. That was some 50 years ago. Most people don't realize it was New Mexico Governor Dave Cargo, a two-term Republican. He served two two-year terms and then was term limited out. After being elected in a close election in 1966, Dave Cargo established the State Film Commission, bringing in lots of money and attention to the land of enchantment. And if you have a library of old movies and would like to see what Dave Cargo looked like at that time, you can see him in a cameo appearance playing a New Mexico State Trooper in a movie. The movie was Bunny O'Hare, which starred Betty Davis and Ernest Borgnine. He stood and said, they went that way. <laughs> the movie was shot in New Mexico. He also had a cameo with Larry Hagman and uh, Joan Collins in the movie Up in the Cellar. For the people in Santa Fe who live and breathe politics, there's more. Dave Cargo was somewhat of an outsider, even in his own political party, so he was known as Lonesome Dave. Over the years, I spoke to him a number of times and found him very well informed at all times and also very nice. My former talk show colleague, Janice Arnold Jones, who served in the New Mexico legislature a number of years, still speaks very highly of his understanding of government. So be sure to find Buddy O'Hare, the movie that Betty Davis and Ernest Borgnine made for her real laugh. It is. It's actually a good movie. One last thing on that subject. Have you ever seen the Columbia Pictures movie Easy Rider starring Dennis Hopper? Peter Fonda, Jack Nicholson. What's the connection to Dave Cargo and the connection to New Mexico? We see again Lonesome Dave's interest in the movies. Well, in 1969, that meant that the Las Vegas, New Mexico jail scenes were really shot in the Las Vegas, New Mexico jail. Thanks for the exposure, Dave. Now, one of the real stories of New Mexico that some people think could be made up but is not, it's a true story, it's about Smokey Bear. Sometimes referred to as Smokey Da Bear, it was early summer 1950 that there was a forest fire northeast of the village of Capitan, New Mexico. A badly singed bear cub was rescued from a tree. At first, they called him Hotfoot Teddy, Teddy Bear, before the name was changed to Smokey. 
No one knew where the mother bear was, so he was taken into town to treat the injuries and to decide what to do with him. Ranger Ray Bell took him to Santa Fe, where the bear was treated by a veterinarian, Dr. Edwin Smith. There's a great picture of Ray Bell's young daughter, Judy Bell. She's with Smokey, though she said he wasn't very nice because he scratched and bit. National News picked up the story of Smokey Bear because of the tie-in to an advertising campaign. In the early 1940s, an advertising campaign to deal with forest fire safety came up with a bear wearing jeans and a hat holding a shovel and saying, Only you can prevent forest fires. This was created in 1944 just as drawings, but the name Smokey Bear caught on. Now, the little bear cub, after he healed sufficiently to travel, was taken to the Washington, D.C. National Zoo to live out his life. 26 years there, with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of visitors. Among other things, he had a honey and berry tree to which get treats, because he was a lucky bear. He was a zoo visitor favorite. So many people wrote to Smokey, how many people, lots, that he got his own zip code. It's true. The zip code 20252 was a zip code for if you wrote to Smokey Bear. And then after he passed, he was returned for burial in Capitan, New Mexico, where there's a great museum and park, the Smokey Bear Historical Park. His final resting place in the park has a plaque that says, This is the resting place of the first living Smokey Bear, the living symbol of wildfire prevention and wildlife conservation. And I've been there many times. I used to live in Capitan, so I, I do like that museum. Now, what is coming in the next few weeks in this harvest, which is going on as I speak, that the Fresh Chili Company is offering a special reserve release of Hatch Green Chili Veritol Big Gem. It's going to be in a 16-ounce jar. Veritol means that this product will only be made with Big Gem Chili, which is sweet and has a medium heat level. And I understand they're going to chop the, the chili meat a little bit bigger. Great to put on hamburgers, I tell you. Big Jim is very popular in New Mexico restaurants and homes, very popular in my home. In 1975, Big Jim Chili was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the largest chili pots, perfect for chili rellenos. It was developed by chili researcher Dr. Roy Nakayama at New Mexico State University. It's a hybrid of New Mexico chili peppers and a Peruvian pepper that Nakayama and fellow researcher Jim Lytle combined. Big Jim is named for Big Jim, or well, for Jim Lytle, who died unexpectedly at that time, and Dr. Roy Nakayama celebrated him. I'm going to do the story of Roy Nakayama sometime pretty soon. One thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces or happen to be in our little slice of paradise, they can come by the Fresh Chili Company gift shop at 1160 El Paseo Road. That's Suite D7A in Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, I need to tell you there's some new products from the Fresh Chili Company that I myself find are wonderful. There's a local honey with hatch red chili that's great on biscuits. French fries are so much better with the Fresh Chili Company's Hatchup, which is ketchup and hatch red chili, and a number of other ones. Come browsing at the, at the gift shop, and you can look at those surprises. Also, there's some frozen surprises that I assure you are wonderful. Again, it's Monday to Saturday, the Fresh Chili Company gift shop, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is Michael Swickard with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We'll always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico in these podcasts. Now, if you have something or someone that you would like me to talk about, write to michael at, at freshchilico.com, michael at freshchilico.com. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.